Hey guys, welcome to Modern Crafting. Today we are going to be working on an image transfer clock. We're gonna take some images, I'm gonna teach you how to transfer them on, and then we're gonna to put together the clock mechanism. So this will be super fun. You all should have gotten your clock transfer pack. In it you'll find four different pictures that you can choose from. These were all printed out on a black and white laser printer. Um, if you have a laser printer and you wanted to do a different image, you're more than welcome to do that. It will not work on an inkjet printer. It has to be a laser printer. So that's what we're going to use here. And you've got your disc and I'm going to show you how to get started. I'm going to set this out of the way. First thing you want to do is cut out your image. I'm going to use the tree image for this one. And I've already got this cut out, so you don't have to watch me cut it out. You want to leave a little bit of a border so that you can actually handle it once it's covered in decoupage, because otherwise it's going to be tricky to get it onto your disc. So you will cut it out, leave a little bit of a border, not too much, and then take your Mod Podge and your paintbrush, and you'll have plenty of this left over. So if you wanted to Mod Podge on something else you could also leave a little bit for the uh, magnets that we're going to be doing later this year all you're going to want to do is put a nice thick layer your goal is to completely cover all of the area where there is the black ink because that is the part that you're going to want to transfer um, sometimes you get little weird globs on there uh, that's what you're going to want to transfer onto your wood. So you want to make sure any area that doesn't get the Mod Podge on it is not going to transfer. So get it nice and thick. You don't need to do all the white area like uh, on the border there because that's not going to transfer anyway. Also, highly recommend <clears throat> you lay something down over your table and then even uh, I should have probably put down wax paper or paper towels or something under this because I'm getting this all over my tablecloth. So, okay. So I will show you. I'm going to scrape off a little because I got mine on a little thick here. Okay. So that is about what you're going for right there. You want it to be pretty thick but not dripping because you don't. what you don't want it to do is go everywhere all over your project. The other thing you need to be very careful of, we do not want this on this side of the paper. It will make it difficult to impossible to transfer it. So uh, do not get the Mod Podge on the back of this. Keep it only on the ink side. I'm gonna take my disc and it's got the hole in the center where the clock's gonna go through. We're just gonna cover that up for the moment. Center it. If you wanna use a ruler, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and eyeball it. We are gonna have numbers going along the outside. So you'll wanna think about where you're placing this. I'm just gonna pat down, especially in the middle first, kind of where that hole is in the center of the disc, and then go out from there. And you might get a little bit of stuff coming out the outer edge. And you could just wipe that uh, anywhere except for your furniture or your clothing. So maybe like a paper towel, have that handy. And I've got it all over my fingers now. I wanna make sure I don't get it from my fingers onto the back of this. So, all right, press that down. Now, you are going to need this to be completely dry for it to work. So you can set it aside for a couple of hours. You can put it in a warm spot. You could, um, put some heat on it with a hairdryer. Um, you just want to get it completely dry. So that is what it's going to look like when you've got it all stuck on there. So set it aside, go watch a movie, do some chores, mow the lawn, whatever. Or if you're impatient, grab a hairdryer and get it completely dry. Because if you attempt it, if it's at all damp, it's not going to work. All right. Well, here's one I happen to do. It's already dry. So this is what it looks like. Now here's the magic. You're gonna need water and you can use a sponge, you could use a paper towel, anything to get the water 
onto here. I'm just gonna drip a little bit of water onto here and then pat it with the sponge. Some people recommend that you use the sponge to, we're gonna remove this layer of paper. I actually don't love that, I just use my finger. Okay, so I would give it a minute or so, just make sure it really soaks in. As you get it wet, you're gonna see that image starts to come through, becomes translucent. And what you can do is start rubbing it. See how when I rub it, the paper starts to rub off? And that's all we're gonna do. What has happened is your ink has fused with the Mod Podge and it's sticking to the wood and we are just rubbing the paper away. You might need to keep applying some water. It can get a little messy here. So you wanna do it with a little bit of force, but if you do it with too much force, you might actually peel up. So now my image is done. I still have a bunch of little shards on here. What I would do next is take a pair of scissors or like a pen and just poke through that middle section there because that is where your clock mechanism is going to come through. And you can just kind of either carefully tear. You don't want to tear it so that the whole thing comes ripping off, but just kind of create the hole there so that you can utilize that to put your clock through. Also, I have paper towels here. I'm gonna use a paper towel to wipe this off. There we go. All right, so there is our base. And then I would highly recommend that you stop, clean up all the gunk that you have created here before moving on. I will move mine out of the way. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we can add our numbers next. Okay, so mine is missing a one. You should all have all the numbers. Not sure what's happened in the last month to my one, but it's gone. So we're just gonna pretend that I have it. Uh, I would start by doing 12, six, three, and nine. For those of you, this is a clock for those of you who only have digital clocks. So you might have to do a refresher on how to tell time on one of these. Um, but I would do your four sections first. If you want to use a ruler for this and figure out how many inches in between, you can do that. Uh, I recommend that you carefully peel this off and then make sure the backing doesn't come with it like it's wanting to on this one. So center this and don't press it down all the way until you're absolutely certain you have it exactly where you want it to be. I is blocking isn't it whoops so I'm gonna try doing this upside down you can take your ruler line it up with the center of your hole there and then you can put your two on one side of it and I'm doing this upside down so if this is not straight that's my excuse and then you can take your one and move your ruler over and put it on the other side right here so then theoretically, and I don't have it pushed down all the way until I'm sure. So that's not quite centered with the tree, with the top of the tree. So I would probably actually move this over a little bit. But once you get it exactly centered, you can take your ruler and you just go straight down and put it just to the side of the hole and put the six at the bottom, if that makes sense. got my six looking at where the top of the tree is looking at where the hole is I want this to be now it's a nine there we go I want it to be exactly even with this hole so I'm gonna line this up so that the center of the six is even with this hole right here and just go straight down from the 12 and put it right there 
and you might have to like, oh, it doesn't want to unstick. Try it a couple of times to make sure that you're getting everything lined up correctly. So if you start, yeah, that's not quite. My 12 is off. Um, and make sure that your wood is completely dry. Uh, mine is not, and so it's not, these aren't sticking fabulous. Um, dry your wood completely before you start this part. For the sake of the video, I'm rushing. Okay, then you would do your three and your six, and then you can figure out how many inches you've got between and how far apart you want to space the rest of your numbers. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that that's all done. And then we're gonna move on to the clock. Now the clock looks really intimidating because there's all these tiny pieces. And I have the instructions here that I'll go through with you. I think I'm gonna move the camera and zoom in on my hands and what I'm doing here so you can actually see all these tiny pieces. So you're going to open up your clock package and this is what you're going to find. You're gonna find your clock mechanism with a hanger and then you're gonna find an hour hand and a minute hand. And this is called a second sweep. It's the second hand that goes around. And then you're gonna have a little tiny baggie with all of these parts. And you have in here, this is your rubber washer. This is your brass washer, hex nut. And this is a cap nut. And then you've got a minute nut. And you're gonna decide whether, like this one, you just have your hour and your minute hand with the cap nut, or you can choose to not have this cap nut on, and in place of it, you can have this little this uh, sweep nut, or minute nut, and then you can put this on in place of the cap, and this is your minute hand, or your second hand that's gonna go around. So this is optional. You'll just need to decide if you wanna have a second hand or not have a second hand. So on this one, I did not do the second hand, but you definitely could do that if you prefer that. Take this rubber washer and just put the rubber washer on like that. So mechanism, hanger, rubber washer. Okay, second try here. Now we put the clock on. Okay, so now we put, this is called the brass washer, and that is what's gonna go on the front here, just like that. Next, you're gonna put on this hex nut. And so if you want, you can try and do it with your fingers, like so. If you want to use uh, like some needle nose to kind of grab hold of that and get that in there. Now this says you don't wanna over tighten this. So you wanna get on, so this, actually might need to hold the back and then just keep the back straight and then kind of, you don't want to over tighten it like crazy Hercules style, but you do want it to be snug on there so this doesn't move around. Okay, so this is what we've got now. We have rubber washer on the back and then we have got, oopsies, the brass washer and then the hex nut on. Now comes your hour hand. That is the shorter one and it says here, we are going to slide this onto here and press down until it stops. So again, you'll want to be gentle. These bend really easily, so no brute strength. Just push down until it stops and then it says turn to, actually you probably want to hold the back, and then turn to the 12 o'clock position, like so. Then we are going to Put this on, oopsies, I'm going to get that on there, oops, be very careful, okay. There we go. So it fits one way and one way only. All right, then it says to align that with the minute one. Now, this is the point where you can decide, do I just wanna put the cap on so that it looks like this, or do I want a second hand? If you want the second hand, you're gonna use this little guy right here. And this is called the minute nut. Otherwise, 
you're going to screw this on the top and it's going to be done. So I will attempt to put this one on. So you might be better off. I did not grab my needle nose, but you might have better luck. Hopefully you can see. It's hard to keep my hands out of the way here. Kind of screw that down. I would recommend that you grab some needle nose because it is very tiny. Okay. And see, I've now bent my minute hand, so I have to be careful. Okay. And then this would go on top. It just plugs right into the top there. And it says just to press down until it stops. And I will put these directions. Ah, there we go. There's my second hand. Okay. So we put everything to the 12 o'clock position. My minute hand is not. There we go. And then what you would do is turn it over and put one AA battery in. You've got the plus and the minus. It shows where it goes and your little guy will start ticking and you'll be able to know what time to do your homework and to start your chores. So this is your finished product. Okay guys, so that's your finished product. I can't wait to see, keep sending me all your photos of your finished products. Don't forget to put your AA battery in the back and feel free to add your own creativity to this. So I hope you had a great time with this and I'll see you guys next week. Have a great week.